Check this fence out. Isn't that an awesome fence? Okay, you probably just see a fence. What's the big deal? But I'm really proud of it because I just spent the last two weekends building it. Um, I've been complaining for a while that I haven't really got the real cattle wrangler experience. I haven't got to do what cattle wranglers do because the cattle are all just out in the pastures. But this is what cattle wranglers do. Build and maintain fences. This is a huge part of what they do because, well, cows are 2,000 pound animals. And if you're trying to keep them in one spot, good fences are important. So I've gained a really good appreciation for a good fence. And a good fence starts with the posts. We spent last weekend pounding posts. We rented a machine called, appropriately enough, a post pounder, um, which you can see here. And pounding posts is a precision operation. Um, it takes quite a lot to line them up so they're perfectly vertical and perfectly in line with each other so you're not bending boards as you put the boards on. And I guess that's the second half, is these boards. Uh, so yesterday we put those boards on and made sure they were totally level and firmly attached with screws so that when the 2,000 pound cows lean on them, they don't just pop off. So it's getting pretty cold here on the prairies and uh, we're supposed to have our first frost tomorrow, which means Susan is out in her home garden picking the last of her tomatoes so that they don't freeze. And uh, you may remember back way back when I was at Amara Farm, I did a couple episodes about pruning tomatoes and how finicky that can be and how important it is. Well, this is an example of why it's important, because this is what tomato plants look like when you don't prune them. They get giant and bushy and they topple over and trying to pick tomatoes from these bushes is a pain in the ass. Uh, the tomatoes are all on the inside of the bush. Uh, you have to reach around stems and you break things. It's a mess. And if we were trying to grow tomatoes commercially, as opposed to just for her home garden, this wouldn't be feasible. So now you have a concrete example of why you prune your tomatoes. So last week I talked a little bit about the psychology of filming cows and how you don't just show up with a camera, you let the cows come to you. And this week I learned an even better technique, which is be where the cows want to be. And you do that with salt. See, cows don't get enough salt from the hay or the pasture that they're eating. And so Susan has to bring them blocks of salt, which they lick. And so we showed up in the truck, dropped off a block of salt, and then Susan left me with the salt and she went away to do her own thing. And so there I was, a block of salt and a camera. And it didn't take long for the cattle to show up because they know the sound of the truck and they know that means salt. And so there I was, a camera, a block of salt behind me, and a herd of 60 cattle coming towards me. And they arrived and they weren't sure what to make of me, but they knew the salt was behind me. And they weren't going to let me stop them from getting that salt. And so I got to spend like 40 minutes in the middle of a herd of cattle. This is the big herd. This is like 60 heifers that have been on pasture all summer. And I was in the middle of them filming close-ups and filming cows licking salt and licking each other and grazing. So that's all the footage you see here. Anyway, next week we're taking some steers to auction, so I'll get to see how cattle get sold. So you can check that out. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss that. Uh, you can find out more about the documentary I'm making at thehandsthatfeedus.ca or you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram. I'll see you next week at the auction.